Hey, it's Corey Boldroff, the real estate guy, doing this month's monthly market update. It is January 2022. Happy New Year to everyone. I hope you had a great holidays and are getting ready for 2022. So I do these monthly market updates so that you can be informed with real stats, facts, and hear what the experts are saying so that you can make the best informed decision for yourself. So with no further ado, let's get into it. So as always, I like to start off with a quote. This one is from Bill McBride, the founder of Calculated Risk. It is, it is possible that rising mortgage rates will slow the housing market or the Fed might raise rates sooner than expected due to the recent pickup in inflation. But I believe one thing is certain, inventory will tell the tale. So I know there's lots of speculation and you know projections that interest rates are gonna go up. Inflation has definitely been one of the highest it's been in years. And those are definitely going to affect the real estate market. But one thing is for certain, the inventory will really define how the real estate market responds in 2022. Kind of the bad news is listings are at a record low. And when I say record low in January, generally we're anywhere from 8,000 to a high of about 13,000 active listings on the market in any January going back the last 20 years. This January, we have just under 4,700 active listings. So we are severely under what we need to be for there to be a healthy market. That's why it is very hard if you're out there looking for homes, it's very hard to find one and be that buyer that actually gets the home just because there's absolutely no inventory on the market. When we look at housing inventory is lower than last year, we're looking here at December of 2021, year over year compared to December of 2020. So here being in California, we're 27.8% lower than we were last year. And last year was a low inventory year as well. Uh, it's really what's been driving up prices. Buyer demand has definitely been very, very high and very steady, um, but there is a big reason why we're seeing the appreciation that we're seeing along with economics, the supply and demand, the lower the supply, higher the demand, the higher the prices. When we look at months of inventory of homes for sale, so this is how long a home sits on the market for. Generally, uh, a normal market is anywhere from four to six months. So we going back to 2019, January, you can see we're just under four months. Throughout the year of 2019, we climbed up to that normal, uh, you know, four to six months. Then when the pandemic hit uh, in 2020, it definitely uh, you know, boosted back up to that four and a half. But since we came back out of the lockdown, there was a built up demand for buyers and sellers just didn't put themselves back on the market. So as we've been through 2020 to now 2021, we can see that in November, the average home stayed on the market for less than two months. And today we're at about 38 days on the market for a house being on the market. So what is really a big indicator also is buyer activity. Uh, a lot of it has to do with, you know, a lot of people are moving up or moving down. Uh, there's also all millennials that have decided to, you know what, maybe buying is the best decision for my future. Um, as well as rental prices have jumped up enormously. Uh, they've had the biggest jump in rental prices uh, that we've ever seen in the history of our country. It's actually cheaper to buy than it is to rent in almost every major city across the country. When we look at buyer demand, we like to look at uh, showing time, which is a service that real estate agents use. Um, and they basically is like a booking or a calendar uh, service. And what we've seen that is, you know, starting 2020 of January, we had about 153 showings per month. And last month of our last month that they calculated was in 2021 in November, we had 176. 
So a lot of buyers are still looking and traditionally during the holidays, it's a lot lower. There's a lot lower demand during the holidays, but the last two years has been anything but normal. And it kind of has done away with the old theory that we're gonna wait till summer to start looking. We're gonna wait till summer to put our houses on the market. And it's been more that people are nonstop looking. And as soon as they find the home that they want, they go out at it aggressively. As well as another stat that was presented to me was that over 78% of, and another stat that was brought to my attention is that over 40% of homes are being bought from investors or corporations. And 78% of those were all cash buyers. So there's a lot of cash in the market, but as well as investors long-term are seeing that home ownership is the best way to create wealth and they're making a dash for buying up every single thing in the market. And they don't care if they're overpaying because they foresee that in 10 years, whoever owns these homes is going to be the one that survives the change and shift in the art economy. When we show a, uh, this is showings crush pre-pandemic numbers. So again, in 2017, in November, again, they're historically lower in November than they are throughout the year. November, December, January are slower months. We had about 103 showing requests and in 2021 in November, we had 175. So a lot more demand, a lot more requests for showings. Buyers are out there aggressively looking. When we look at the quote from Michael Lane, he is the general manager of Showing Time. Showing traditionally lag during the holiday season, but the data we're seeing tells us that buyer demands remain strong. The fact that every region showed a year over year increase indicates that buyers are undeterred. It speaks to the desire to keep searching for their next home. Pending sales are higher than pre-pandemic numbers. So when we look at 2017, pending home sales in November was about 109. Some of it is because generally we have a lot less listings in November but we worked ourselves through 2017 to 2021 and we see that there's 122 pending home sales which again just shows you that buyers don't care about the holiday season right now they just want to find their next home and are actively looking because of such low inventory they know they have to grab it as soon as it comes in there. the biggest you know takeaway that i can tell you and the, the biggest shocker to most people is how much home equity they have in their homes we're at the highest level ever in the history of our country about home equity. So according to the Realtors Conference and Expo in 2021, the lack of insight around home equity presents an opportunity for real estate professionals who are always looking for touch points with past clients. So you'll probably reach to hear me reaching out to you in the next couple months. Of, Do you realize how much home equity you have in your home? I'm one to believe that yes, it is nice to have a little buffer of equity in your home, but it, whether you have 100,000, 200,000, 300,000, your home is gonna appreciate at the same rate. So that money is basically just sitting there, not actually making you money. So a lot of times there are smart things to do with that. Take it out, invest in stocks, invest into cryptocurrency, uh, put it into a long-term savings account, into an insurance product, or as I believe, take it out and buy another home with it. Now you have two homes that are growing equity and growing appreciation. According to CoreLogic's core, uh, third quarter home equity report, the average homeowner uh, gained a $57,000 in US homeowners across the board. We saw an average of 31% in year over year percentage increase in equity across the board. There was a gain of $3.2 trillion in equity. This summer's home price growth reached the highest level in more than 45 years, pushing equity gains to a net record high. In California, the average homeowner increased by $119,000. And the, according to your home, the higher priced your home, the more appreciation you saw, the more equity you have in your home you might be pleasantly surprised about how much equity is in your home due to the price of your home. Now, I'm not saying you necessarily have to sell your home, but I personally would recommend you tapping into the equity so that money starts working for you. 
According to Frank Martel, president of CEO uh, and president and CEO of CoreLogic, not only have home equity gains helped homeowners more seamlessly transition out of forbearance and avoid a distressed sale, but they've also enabled many to continue building wealth. According to Cushy, the uh, deputy of chief economics of First American, U.S. households own 36.8 trillion in owner-occupied real estate. 11.5 in debt, and the remaining is 25 trillion in equity, making this the highest equity that we've ever had in the history of our country. If you've been following me, back in 2019, we were just around 17 trillion, so we're now at 25 trillion dollars in equity, which is another reason why I always contest that we are not into that 2007, 2008 market where we're going to crash. There's just way too much equity in people's homes. So can you do with the quote? In inflated adjustable terms, homeowners had an average of 294,000 in equity, which is a historical high. And in California, it is almost double that in equity. So what can we expect in the 2022 housing market? What I want to try to do is give you some certainties about what we're going to see in the market. Obviously, no one has the crystal ball. We don't know exactly what's going to happen with Omicron, with interest rates, with inflation, but we can kind of give you some certainties about what we foresee is going to happen. First, mortgage rates. Across the board, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, a couple of the big uh, realtor associations, all see interest rates rising. Right now, we're just above 3%. Sometimes you can get under 3% depending on what your mortgages and rates are and how much equity you have in your home. But they foresee that across the board, we're going to see a rise in interest rates right around three, by the end of the year, you have about three and a half to 4% in interest rates. Now, we don't know this for sure, but we can definitely see that all the experts are seeing a rise in, in interest rates. Now, there's still historically low interest rates. The last 10 year average has been anywhere from three and a half to 5%. So we're gonna go back closer to the average and get out of this historical low interest rates up in the twos and even low twos that we saw at one point in time. So forbearances finally fall below 1 million. In 2020, we had a high of about 4.7 million people went into forbearance uh, due to the lockdowns and the banks allowing you to go into forbearance. A lot of people putting those payments on the back end. But as we come through and then through the pandemic, a lot of people got back up on the par, got back started to work, and it came out of forbearance. And we just saw a, definitely a gradual decline in those forbearances. A lot of people four to five were able to either make a payment plan, come out of forbearance, bring their, their payments back up to normal. And we finally fell under a million. In December of 2021, we were at 890,000 in forbearance, which is a great, great statistic. Glad that everyone is able to be helped and get out of that forbearance. And what we saw is very few actually went into foreclosure. So according to uh, the senior leader of Lee Search, of CoreLogic, we may see a little bit of an uptick in foreclosure rates in 2022. Just an uptick though, from an extraordinary low level. We're not expecting to see a big increase. We expect delinquency rates overall on mortgages to actually continue to remain quite, quite low. So just because we went to forbearance doesn't mean that they go actually into foreclosure. And a lot of people were able to save themselves from going into foreclosure. Again, a lot of it had to do with the extremely high equity that people have in their homes, the low inventory. So those that did need to sell could put it on the market and get top dollar for their house, or they were able to keep their home and keep building that wealth in their home. When we look at has home price acceleration peaked? So this is the percent year over year, monthly price increases over 2021. So in January, 2021, we saw anywhere from 10 to 12% appreciation from 2020's January. 10% is a, you know, historically it's, it's pretty high. We see an average of a 40 years, about three and a half to 5% appreciation growth year over year. So starting at 10% is double the average. And what we saw in 2021 is it's just flying up a roller coaster all the way up to the top where we almost saw 20% 
appreciation growth year over year in some cities and major state or some in some states and major cities saw even up to almost 31% appreciation growth. Now, we don't want that number to keep growing because then we could have an inflated bubble. But again, a lot of it has to do with extraordinary low inventory. Now, what we saw is right around July, which is usually the end of the summer, which is usually where we peak as it is, we saw it starting to slow down year over year. Now, the big question is, is it going to be a peak and it start to correct itself or is it going to start to plateau? So what I can tell you is my listings that sold in December still got record neighborhood prices and saw a very good appreciation growth from the last December. So I see it more as plateauing and it doesn't mean that we're going to start depreciating in prices. It just means that we're not going to be able to sell our house 20% higher than what we sold it for last year. It might be closer to five to 10%. And we'll take a closer look at the next slides. So what we can see from the seven major, you know, entities that deal with the uh, housing market, we're seeing an average of about 5.2%, which is again, the 40 year average. Uh, the Association of Realtors sees across the nation at being about 2.8%, which I believe is quite low, and, you know, going all the way up to 7.4%. So again, this doesn't mean that housing prices are going to fall. It just means that they're not going to have that huge appreciation growth year over year. So overall, I do think that 2022 will be another strong year for housing, albeit a little bit higher mortgage rates. And we do think home sales will continue to rise and actually reach a 16 year high in 2022. So all I can tell you is if you're thinking about selling, this might be the best year to do so as we might see a plateau and maybe even start seeing a correction depending on how fast interest rates raise. But also you got to keep in mind inflation. Inflation might keep those housing prices steady and might even see an appreciation that might be artificial just due to inflation. So it really depend on how many sellers, you know, decide to put the houses on the market, how many of those baby boomers and senior citizens decide to, you know what, let's not retire in place. Let's sell our big home and downsize or sell our big home and move out of state. Um, and as well as millennials are going to be the driving force in the buyer demand. So there's going to be a lot more of that 30, 35 year olds that decide, you know what, now is the time to come out and buy. And they're going to be out in the market very, very strong. So if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Even if you just want to know what your house is worth, I promise no obligation, no sales tactics, no wasting of my time. I promise I'm here to be of service and I can give you a good education about how much your house is worth and maybe give you some ideas about what you could possibly do with that equity. So again, Corey Boldroff, the real estate guy. I hope you enjoyed this monthly market update. Please let me know if you have any questions. And as always, if you ever know anyone that's looking to buy, sell and invest into real estate, please think of me. I will take care of them. I am one of the hardest working agents that there is, and I promise to deliver five-star service. Thank you so much. God bless.